There are many ways that a state can expand school choice. Some of the public options are to build more schools, to open more charter schools, which are public schools. You could also increase public online learning. These are all um, keeping with the idea that the public schools have a monopoly over education. Some of the other ways you can increase choice in a state is you could provide school vouchers. However, to voucher money can only be used on tuition and fees at a private school or another school outside the public system. Tax credit scholarships are another way that you can increase school choice. We do have the Alabama Accountability Act scholarships, which we are referred to as AAA, and those are tax credit scholarships. So a person could donate money to help a child get an education and they would get a tax credit. And then that money would be put into a pot and there are some scholarship granting organizations that would decide which children get the money and that money could only be used on tuition and fees. If a state is going to remove the state income tax, this option would go away. So that's why you see a lot of states beginning to move away from tax credit scholarships. One important way you can increase choice in a state, and this is a trend that we are seeing across the nation, is to open educational savings account for a child. Now in a state, when you go to educate a child publicly, you get federal money, you get state money, and you get local tax money. There, these are the three incomes to educate a child. When you have an educational savings account, you take the state portion, so the schools would keep any federal or local taxes remaining for that student, but the state portion would go to the parents and then the parents would have the option to use that money however they wanted to educate their child, whether it was homeschooling or whether it was through a private school or an online school. This is the avenue that we are advocating for. This bill in the Alabama legislature is called the Price Act. So I wanna share a little bit about the Price Act with you. Price Act stands for Parental Rights in Children's Education. It's a universal educational savings account for children. It doesn't matter your income level. It doesn't matter if you're in a failing school. All children would be eligible to sign up for an educational savings account, and they could use that money for private school tuition. They could use that money for homeschooling. They could use that money for online schools. They could use it for any education outside of their public school. It empowers parents to direct the education of their children that align with their values. It also allows them to tailor the child's education to their exact needs. In this case, the money follows the student. And it, an educational savings account amount that we're talking about in Alabama is about 90% of what the state would pay to educate a student in Alabama. And that amount is around $7,000 a year. Now, funds that are not used in one year could be rolled over into the next year. But once the child graduates, no more money goes into their educational savings account, obviously. But they have until they're 21 years old, so they can use any remaining money for college or for a trade school. This act would be phased in over a three-year period of time. And it does also work hand-in-hand -hand with the Alabama Accountability Act, which is a tax credit scholarship program. An important thing to know about educational savings accounts is that they are on solid legal ground. So in a state and in Alabama, this is based on 2021, 2022 estimates. But if you'll look on the left-hand side, the state, local and federal portions of money that go to educate a child on average is about, was about $11,377. So in this case, if we would have ESAs, educational savings accounts, back in that time frame, then that ESA amount would have been about 600, I'm sorry, $6,366. These are some of the things that you can use this money for. If you have an educational savings account, what makes it so much better than just a voucher program is you can use it on a whole bunch of different items. For example, tuition, textbooks and fees, individual classes, tutoring services, therapies like occupational, behavioral, or physical or speech therapy, extracurricular activities, 
including athletics, art, music, literature. Computer hardware can be purchased with this money. School uniforms, college tuition like dual enrollment, or if there's money in their account left over after they graduate, they could use it on college tuition and textbooks and fees. In section nine of the bill is a list of other things that this money can be used for. Now, the money doesn't just go directly to the parent's personal bank account. Don't think, get all excited thinking that you can take a trip with this $7,000. It goes into an, a special app. One you, we could use in the state of Alabama could be called Class Wallet. This is what Arizona uses. There are other apps very similar to this, so we don't know for sure exactly what app we would use, but we would use something like Class Wallet. And what that does is it's an online account that would be open for every student who is in, who has an ESA, and that money would go into that account. And then on the other side of this account, there is a vendor list. And within that vendor list, there are also items that could be purchased from that vendor. When it comes time for the child to pay their tuition, the parent would go into the child's account and then click on their account and then click on the vendor. Let's say it was Prattville Christian Academy. They would say, I want $5,000 of this to go towards tuition. And then they would click uh, $200 is going to go to so-and-so uniform company for this uniform. And oh, by the way, we're going to buy a tablet. So that's going to go to this vendor. So the money gets transferred from the class wallet directly to the vendor. It does not go in and out of the account of the parent. And it is also only allowed to be used on the qualified expenses and to the qualified vendors. What is really great about using an application like this versus a debit card is you have a wonderful way to do audits, to keep down on fraud, and it does really open up transparency and accountability. This price act, along with a 13 member advisory board and 10 of the people on that advisory board would be parents that are using the program. This program would be phased in over a three year period of time. Now we would love for this to start in the fall of 2023, but that's not enough time to get it up and running if it does pass this year. So if the bill were to pass in the 2023 session, then it would start in the fall of 2024. So if you had a child that was in kindergarten, third grade, sixth grade, ninth grade, or 12th grade, along with all their siblings, or if you were zoned for a failing school, which would be a D or an F school, if you were a military child, if you were a foster child, and any students with disabilities, of course, along with all of their siblings, you would be allowed to apply for an educational savings account. So if you were in public school and you wanted to have an educational savings account, you would apply for one. You would have to withdraw. Once you're approved, you would withdraw from your public school and you would use your ESA funds to go to another school, to do online schooling or to do homeschooling. The second year, again, would be kindergarten, third grade, sixth grade, ninth grade, 12th graders along with all their siblings. Again, those zoned for a failing school and any school that is rated with a C, which is not failing, but it isn't an A or B. Again, military children, foster children, and students with disabilities. Then on the third year, all children would be eligible. Here's the cost of this program. We look at about 800,000 K through 12 students in Alabama, many of those, most of those actually are public schooled students. So if you're in public school, you don't, you wouldn't have an ESA. ESAs would be for parents who want to pull their kids out of public schools or who are already in a private school who are already homeschooling or who may be uh, going to school with an online school. Those are the ones who would be using an ESA. When we look at the cost of enacting this bill, we look at a couple of different uptake rates. We were looking across the nation for states that have started educational savings account. And we look after one year, after two year, after three years or four years or five years, what was their rate of people coming into the program? It is quite low. And the number one reason that it is low is because most parents don't know about it. 
we believe that the estimated cost to begin this program would be around the $120 million range up to about $300 million. One really important thing to know about this bill is that nothing in this act changes the current laws on how non-public education is run. They have good laws that regulate private schools in Alabama. Things are running very well there. Alabama also has very good laws in regards to homeschooling. This law in no way interferes with or amends the current laws that regulate private schools in Alabama or that regulate homeschools in Alabama. Government and private schools don't have to participate. And let me back up and explain this. When I say government schools don't have to participate, obviously, if you have a public schooled student and you're happy at your public school, of course, you would never apply for an educational savings account because you can't use them if you are a public schooled student. However, there is a way that could benefit government schools. In the bill, it does allow for a public school who, for example, might want to open up their art program or their drama program or their foreign language program. They could open up those different programs if they wanted to and charge tuition for those programs. And then any student who has an educational savings account, they could pay money to that public school to come for that language class or for that drama class. That is allowable in the bill. Now, if a private school for whatever reason or a homeschooling cover school would not want to take ESA funds for whatever reason, they wouldn't have to. This is all a voluntary program on both the student side and also on the educational providers side. The public schools, oftentimes you will hear administrators feel like there will be a mass exodus of people leaving the public schools. The truth is most families are happy with their public schools, but there are many families in Alabama that do want the option for many reasons, whether it's a safety reason, whether their child is being bullied, whether they don't like the academics or the values, they're learning about critical race theory or things that don't line up with their values, they want the option to be able to pull their student out and use that money to educate them in a different way. So public schools would still get any federal or local funds that might be remaining for a student who is pulled out and moved over to an educational savings account. This also can help relieve teacher shortages, which is something we hear about often in Alabama. One really great thing is that data shows when you introduce school choice options in an area that the quality of those local schools actually go up. So educational savings account is a great way to improve education all around. And one of the reasons is that the competition exposes areas for improvement. And now the, the public schools have a little more accountability. They have a little more pressure to do better and they will hopefully rise to the challenge. The information that I just provided to you, of course, will be changing as the bill moves along in the process. Amendments will be added, some will be defeated. So it is definitely a moving part, but what I just explained to you is how the bill will be introduced. And so you can find out more information by going to alabamaeagle.org. On our homepage, you can look up the Price Act. You'll see it right there. Um, every time there's an update, I'm doing my best to update the slides, update the flyers, and keep you abreast of what's going on with this bill. We do hope that you will encourage your senators and your representatives to co-sponsor this bill and to vote for this. We need to make education better. We need to put education back into the hands of parents so that they can educate their kids according to their values and to tailor make an education that is perfect for their own students. Thank you so much.